suspects are being one case involves the DC FBI is now offering a hundred thousand dollars to see for the police are releasing fire. Imagine driving with your child when they see a new building that they recognize, but you know they have never seen it before. Just for them to tell you that they live there or have been there with their old mommy or their kids before this life. Or maybe even remembering a death or a life event you swore happened to you, but really it happened in another life. Hello and welcome to Missy Mysteries. I'm your host Keely and this is a paranormal and true crime podcast. This episode is a very special episode because this is not only the 50th episode of Missy Mysteries, but as of May 5th, I have been making this podcast for a whole year. I want to thank everyone who has made Missy Mysteries possible. For all the podcasters who I have worked with as either guests on the show like Brenda from Horrifying Histories or those who allowed me to be on their podcast like Garth and Cody from Least Haunted Podcast. All of the other podcasters in the podcasting community who have taught me tricks and tips, helping me improve and learn, and most of all, a huge thank you to you for listening and for leaving reviews or sharing the podcast. You as a listener are truly what makes Missy Mysteries possible. I appreciate all of you and I appreciate those who voted on today's topic, which is past lives, one of my favorite topics. What exactly are past lives? Past lives are, to me, not really a paranormal topic, but more of a spirituality topic. The belief in the idea of past lives, also known as reincarnation, comes from multiple religious beliefs such as Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Judaism. It's the belief that a non-physical soul can come back to earth in a new body after their body has died to live another life. There is a variety of beliefs on why a soul would reincarnate, including the need to make up for bad karma from past lives, the want or the need to complete or fulfill things the soul did not get a chance to do before, and the chance to come back to help or aid other people. A psychic named Andrew Brewer says that everyone has a past life or lives. People reincarnate because they like to be here. The soul has taken physical form because it's been on earth before and now wants to experience something more or grow in some way. And while reincarnating souls may evolve in ways that bring more wisdom, souls don't change too drastically from one lifetime to the next. Each soul comes with traits, talents, and quirks. Now, in some religions, it's believed that reincarnation can happen as many times as needed while others, reincarnation can only happen three times without making any changes before reincarnation won't be allowed to happen again. When a soul does reincarnate, they often will meet other souls that they have loved, hated, or shared experiences with in their past lives. These souls can be in the form of animals and people. Often, these other souls are called past life connections and even soulmates in certain cases. But... Soulmates are pretty much a whole other topic themselves, with lots of beliefs from many different religions and spiritualities. And if a person wants to know if another person is connected to them through a past life, they can use a special astrological birth chart that can show them the comic clues to see if they knew that person in their past life. You can also find yourself drawn to the other person. If you are connected to this person from a past life, they will always find a way into your life, no matter what happens. You may feel like you have an unconventional relationship with this person, so your sister may feel like your mom, your best friend may feel like a sister or a brother, and you may feel like maybe your parents are more of siblings. You could also feel like time never passes when you are with them, so you could have possibly gone a year without talking to them and you can just pick up right where you left off like you had been talking every day. Maybe even you instantly feel like you have known the other person for years when you only really have known them for days or maybe weeks. You may also find yourself obsessed or connected to one type of animal or feel drawn to a pet right away. And it may also be as simple as a feeling when you first meet them. When you meet a significant soul from your past life, you may have a gut feeling about them. This could be good or bad gut feeling. Either you are drawn to them or dislike them right away from the start without any reason why. 
A medium named Vincent Ginny told Bustle in an article about past lives, There is no such thing as love at first sight. It's actually love at first memory. Without consciously knowing it, you might be having a past life recall if you felt that overwhelming love at first sight sensation with your partner then perhaps it's because you were together in a past life. These type of connections don't just stay with animals and people, but could possibly happen with certain periods of time, culture, places, and objects. Souls reincarnated may be drawn to periods of time like the Victorian period or the Great Depression, and they may even know things about these times that they shouldn't, especially with young children. One woman wrote about her daughter experiencing something very similar to this by saying, My daughter used to dream about the Egyptian pyramids. It wasn't until the age of eight that she truly could describe the inside of the pharaoh's tomb in great detail. She used to describe the wonder in the relationship between members of the royal family and their subjects. These included many female royal secrets, discussions with their lady maids, and the battles between them and other women for the pharaoh's affection. She vividly recalls conversations held in secret between one female who she describes as a goddess and her protector. These experiences can also go around hobbies or passions as well, like a two-year-old who could describe exactly how to make pizza. I found a story from this boy's sibling who wrote, One day, my two-year-old brother randomly started describing the detailed process of making pizza, the process of keeping the fire going, using a brick oven, allowing the dough to rise. He's never seen anyone make pizza before. So my parents asked when he did this, and he said, With my old family, my mama and papa, not what we called our parents before I died and then came to live with you. Or this woman's three-year-old son, who would talk about his car, and she wrote, When my son was three, he would talk about his boardies, a wood-paneled station wagon, and someone named Bubba. He said he used to surf when he was older before he became a kid. We live in the Midwest, and he has never seen the ocean, much less a surfboard. The connections to past lives... And memories form in many different ways, including unusual memories, deja vu, dreams or nightmares, especially ones that appear routinely or feel more real than others, fears or phobias, birthmarks, unexplained pains, and uncontrollable habits. In my research, I found that most people who experience past life regression are children and often forget the things that they remember or say later in life. But for some, they remember their past lives as adults from past life regression therapy, or they never forget what they learned when they were children. There are two stories in particular that stand out to me when I think about past lives, and the first is the Pollock twins. John and Florence Pollock were a British couple who lived in Hexham, England, and ran a small grocery store. They had two daughters, Joanna, who was born in 1946, and Jacqueline, who was born in 1951. Around noon on May 5th, 1957, the Pollock family was heading to Mass at the Church of Hexham, and John and Florence were in a rush to get to the church since they wanted to secure a good seat for the family at service. While driving to church, a car hit the Pollock family's vehicle. And sadly, the two little girls, 11-year-old Joanna and 6-year-old Jacqueline, passed away at the scene of the accident. John and Florence, understandably, were devastated by the deaths of Joanna and Jacqueline. But in their griefs, they made the decision to add to their family, and Florence became pregnant with twins, which she gave birth to on October 4, 1958. They had two more daughters, Jillian and Jennifer. The girls were identical besides small things that made them stand out as individuals. Jennifer had a birthmark on her forehead right where Jacqueline, her big sister, had a scar from an accident when she was three and a birthmark on her waist, while Julian didn't have any distinguished birthmarks. When the girls were around three months old, John and Florence decided to move away from Hexham to White Bay 
in hopes to start fresh with the twins and find happiness in a new town. But at just two years old, the girls' behavior started to change a bit. They began to ask for toys that belonged to their big sisters, though their parents had never showed them or brought up these toys. John ended up giving the girls the toys, and they had two dolls of their big sisters that was stored in the attic with the toys. And instantly, the twins named their dolls Mary and Susan, the same name their big sisters had named these dolls before them. The twins' behavior started to act more like their big sisters. Sully, Jillian began to act like Joanna and take leadership over Jennifer like a big sister. Well, Jennifer began to act like Jacqueline. By three years old, they even began to ask to visit an amusement park that their big sisters were obsessed with and described it in detail as if they themselves had been visiting there repeatedly. When John and Florence agreed to take the girls to this amusement park in Hexham, their reactions to the town really shocked their parents. They recognized their home that they had left at three months old in detail. They knew every corner of the home and everything you could know about the home. They even knew the neighbors. Their parents said that they acted and spoke the same way that their big sisters did. By four years old, the twins were afraid of cars. They were too afraid to cross the street and would yell, the car is coming for us. And by five years old, the girls could be heard talking about what happened to their big sisters. The conversation overheard was as the following. Jennifer said, I don't want it to happen to me again. It was horrible. My hands were full of blood, as were my nose and my mouth, and I couldn't breathe. And then Jillian says, don't remind me, you looked like a monster, something red coming out of your head. All of these things happened to the twins before the age of six, when the girls seemed to forget about all these things and form their own personalities and stories, like many reincarnated children remember their past lives do. The twins' story attracted the attention of Dr. Ian Stevenson, a psychologist who studied reincarnation in children. In 1987, he wrote a book called Children Who Remember Previous Lives, A Question of Reincarnation. In the book, he describes 14 individual cases of reincarnation, including the Pollock twins' story. For this book, he chose to specifically focus on reincarnated children because he felt adults who remembered past lives are too influenced by movies, television, books, stories, and overall the world. Now, the second story is definitely shorter than the Pollock girls and definitely not as many details, but when reading stories from family members and even some children themselves, this one story really stood out to me. This story is written by a mother about her child who is now in his mid-30s, and it reads, My, at the time, five-year-old son woke up one day and asked me, Where is Banjo? When are we going to look for him? I was shocked. Banjo, the name of our family dog, a bull terrier that we had on the farm when I was a preteen. One day, there was a flash flood in our area, up in Tin, South Africa, and my little brother was stuck in the middle of a raging orange river on a rock. Banjo jumped in the water, he loved swimming, to rescue my brother, but he got swept away by the powerful current and we never saw him again. My brother had to stay on that rock for a full 19 hours before the water was safe enough for a boat to cross to get him. My brother was distraught about our dog having been killed by the flood. Only two years after that incident, my brother was killed while cycling when a speeding vehicle hit him from behind. I have never told my son about Banjo. There is no way he could have known that name. My son has been acting in ways that remind me of my deceased brother. They have the same favorite color. They like the same food. They both like to sing. And I can't help but think that the soul of my brother migrated into my son somehow. What do you think of these stories? Do you believe in reincarnation or people possibly remembering their past lives? Or do you think all of this has reasonable explanations? I want to know what you think on Missy Mystery social media. I also want to know what you think about the podcast. What do you think works? What would you like to hear more of? You can do this on social media 
such as Twitter and Instagram, or by leaving reviews on Good Pods, Apple Pods, and anywhere else you listen to your podcasts and can leave reviews. If you'd like to hear more Misty Mysteries every month, please feel free to check out the podcast Patreon. I am working on getting content up there this month. I am also working on a very special project, which I'm very excited to put together for you guys. But for now, I want to thank you for listening to this episode. And I want to thank you for allowing me to make this podcast. Please stay safe, stay hydrated, and I'll see you next week for a true crime episode.